I told them to just leave the Capitol. And in response, they yelled, no, man, this is our house. President Trump invited us here. We're here to stop the steal. Joe Biden is not the president. Nobody voted for Joe Biden. I'm a law enforcement officer, and I do my best to keep politics out of my job. But in this circumstance, I responded. Well, I voted for Joe Biden. Does my vote not count? Am I nobody? That prompted a torrent of racial epithets. That was former Capitol Police officer Harry Dunn testifying before the January 6th Select Committee and speaking plainly about what he went through on January 6th, 2021, three years ago today. Ever since, he's been a critical voice in the fight for American democracy. And now he's taking it a step further by running for Congress to represent Maryland's third district. Joining me now in studio is Harry Dunn, former U.S. Capitol Police officer, congressional candidate in Maryland, and author of Standing My Ground, a Capitol Police Officer's Fight for Accountability and Good Trouble after January 6th. Officer Dunn, very nice to see you again. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. I, so with that, uh, all those things you just read about me, the things that I am, I, you left out just public servant. I, I think that encompasses everything that you just uh, said that I am. Mm -hmm. and I'm just a public servant. That's it. Well, you're trying. You're, you're a public servant who's trying to add yet another public servant duty yeah. to to the roster. Here's a clip from your campaign launch video. We can't ever let this happen again. And you've heard it from Trump himself. He is hell bent on finishing what he started this day. I'm stepping into a new role today, but I can't do it alone. I believe every one of us has a role to play in this fight. So join me. We've got a democracy to protect. Officer Dunn, what made you decide to run now? Now? Um, you know, my whole life, I've been, just like I said, I've been uh, a public servant or, you know, had the desire to serve. And... Um, that's no different than what I did on January 6th and everything that I've done after January 6th. If you would ask me before January 6th, hey, would you ever run for Congress? Maybe when I retire at the age 55, 57, not as a 40 year old man who resigned four years early before he's eligible to receive a pension mm -hmm. in full retirement. Um, we can't wait this moment that we're in now, I refer to it right now where we are in this period of time as a moment. And this moment, we, it, there's no delay. Uh, I like to live by the phrase that uh, until there's nothing that can be done, there's always something that can be done. And um, I think my role as the Capitol Police, I did all that I can do to fight for democracy, for fight for accountability, and to protect the Constitution. You know, if elected, you'd be serving with some colleagues who not only refuse to label what happened on January 6th an insurrection, but who also are attempting to rewrite the history of that day that you lived through. How, how will you deal with that? The same way I deal with it before I announced my candidacy. I protected those members almost three years after they continued to say those things because I put democracy, I put myself, I put, excuse me, I put the country above myself. I put democracy above myself. They're allowed to have those opinions. And I was allowed to, and I was able to put myself and my personal thoughts to the side. However, right now there's an opportunity in this moment. My, I like to refer to my moral compass is facing North and I need to be fighting for this con this country, this constitution, and the people of the 3rd District of Maryland, too. Um, last, uh, um, last night, uh, Trump repeated the lie that the FBI of led course. the charge on January 6th. And I've been talking about this University of Maryland Washington Post poll um, that reveals 34 percent of Republicans and 30 percent of independents believe the FBI organized and encouraged the insurrection. Do these percentages shock you? Imagine watching that footage that you showed from the insurrection and those and labeling the people attacking the officers as the ones who are victims. I, yes, it's shocks. I mean, it's it's shocking to it's I don't, it's shocking that it still exists. Like, that's why we need people like myself uh, to be out there and be truth tellers. I've, I've heard the phrase that um, truth is the best disinfectant. And we need to keep we don't need to get frustrated that they're not listening. We need to just keep on saying it like we can't get frustrated and 
We got a lot of good people that are retiring from Congress, so we need more to replace it with good people in Congress. Um, and that's why I'm running, to continue to fight and push back, because if we don't push back, they win. Um, in, in his speech yesterday, President Biden stressed uh, the, the dire threat uh, a second Trump presidency yeah. would be to democracy, saying, quote, democracy is on the ballot, your freedom is on the ballot. Is this a strong message to voters uh, heading into 2024? <laughs> Joe Biden agrees with me that <laughs> <laughs> we are we are one election away from the uh, potential um, extinction of democracy as we know it. Uh, Donald Trump has said his own mouth that he wants to be a dictator, even if he said just for a day or he said it. Those are, those are, those are made up words. Right. He said that. What, at what point do we not take him serious and take the things that he said out of his mouth at face value? So, yes, I do believe that is important. That's why I stepped away from the role that I was in to this role that I'm seeking now, because it can't wait. Mm -hmm. and, and if elected, what issues do you hope to address so, in Congress? So I, 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 I'm a Democrat. I, um, I, my values align with Democratic principles and stuff. But um, obviously, the right to choose, uh, codifying Roe v. Wade into uh, federal law, common sense gun reform, lower health care costs uh, across the country for the people of Maryland. Um, but one of the things that I've definitely been pounding the pavement on, um, and you know, from the beginning, is mental health. You know, we need to incorporate that into just the broad health care spectrum, and it needs to be labeled as just health care. Uh, we need to reduce the stigma of that. And I love to look incorporate um, legislation with me, uh, mental health mm -hmm. into um to reduce the stigma of it going forward. And so um, former Capitol Police officer Harry Dunn, now candidate Canada, for Congress, yeah. Harry Dunn. Harry, where, Harry, where, uh, where, yeah, yeah, what's the website? That's it, HarryDunnForCongress.com. Um, and I need everybody to donate, chip in, um, because we all have a role. And whether that's, you know, knocking on doors, uh, sharing the message, uh, helping donate, um, picking up the phone, um, registering people to vote. We uh, we all have a role in protecting and defending this democracy. And you say H Harry is that Harry Dunn for Harry F O R Dunn. F O R F O R okay. yeah for Congress.com and donate. Yep. All right. Former U.S. Capitol Thanks, Police Officer, now candidate for uh, Congress from the great state of Maryland, Harry Dunn. Thank you very much thank for you. coming back Thanks to the show. Thanks for having me, man.